we did a great job parenting. We didn't do the best job, and but we did the best we could mm-hmm. at the time. There were two times, once he put his hand on me, and I took him to the ground, and I was going to kill him. I was choking him out. Well, guys, everybody's got to watch their heroes die at some point, right? Today, we're going to be talking about some things that are going to change your opinion about somebody who has become quite near and dear to this channel. I'm sorry to do this to you. Cooking with Jack, aka Jack Scalfani, aka the king of raw chicken, is somebody that we are very, very familiar with on this channel. Or, uh, at least that's what I thought. Recently, I have learned a couple of things about Jack Scalfani that have permanently changed my opinion on on him forever and to make me feel kind of silly forever feeling bad for him. Now, if you're unaware, Jack Scalfani is a joke of a cook here on YouTube. He is somebody that I have become quite familiar with over the years. Now, while he's always striked me as a bit of an unsavory person, I thought that was really all it was, just a guy who's kind of a douche, but doesn't really mean anything by it. Over the last few months, however, I have learned that that is not really the case. Now, look, this video was going to be a bit of a yap session, but I really feel like I need to set the scene here because uh, the stuff we're going to be talking about is uh, pretty serious. My tone may not reflect that because I'm going to be kind of joking about it because, well, it's Jack. But seriously, I'm not joking when I say that I hope, at least, surely, you're going to come out of this video and if you did know Jack before, you're going to have a very, very, very different image of him after this. So a lot of you guys will know that about seven or eight months ago last summer, I decided to stop making videos on Jack because his physical health was deteriorating pretty obviously. He was coming off his like fourth or fifth stroke. He couldn't really make the videos like he used to. He wasn't really able to talk or handle himself during the videos and it was just kind of uncomfortable to watch and I felt like I was kind of being cruel continuing to make those videos. I didn't feel it was right so I decided to stop. But even though I stopped making videos on him I have not stopped watching his content. Believe it or not I actually do love my job. I love what I do and the things that I talk about are things that I am interested in and would be talking about anyways. So in that time, I never really stopped keeping up with Jack. One thing that I did start doing though that I wasn't really doing beforehand is when I'm bored at like 2 a.m., I'll go on Jack's channel and look at some of his past live streams. I never catch them when he's actually streaming, but I've watched a lot of them over the last six months, or at least like the first 10 minutes of them. And just from those live streams alone, my views on Jack have been pretty significantly altered. Now I knew Jack was into some funky political stuff, but I didn't really know he was like one of the super goofy, wacky alt-right guys, like one of the go woke, go broke people. The kind of people who share stuff on Facebook about how Cardi B and Megan the Stallion are trying to possess your child. Yeah, he's one of those. So already, I had begun to not really like the guy that much. Not that I loved him before, but it was really starting to get to like a genuine disliking. But his channel is just so hard to look away from, especially for me, a professional career hater. It was just pure entertainment. But then, about a week ago, I got a DM on Instagram. Now, I try to check my Instagram DMs pretty often, and I would say for maybe the last two years or so, about once a month, I would get a DM from somebody, it was always somebody different, saying something along the lines of, Jack Scalfani is an awful person, you need to watch this video. And then they would link me to a YouTube video. Now, I'm gonna be honest, up until this point, I had just been ignoring these DMs for a couple of reasons. One is because I don't really like to click on links from my DMs, I know that's kind of paranoid, but I just don't. And two, I figured it was just one of those things where a micro celebrity gets some sort of like hate circle around them and they were just spamming people trying to make Jack look bad. That was honestly my first thought and I just ignored it because it was always the same video. I had basically memorized the link at that point and I thought they were just DMing me because I am a relatively large creator, I guess, who talked about Jack a lot and that's basically all I thought about it. But then about a week ago, I got a DM saying, dude, cooking with Jack admitted to trying to kill his son with a YouTube video linked underneath it. This was not cryptic. This was not a wall of text. It got my attention, so uh, I looked at the video. Now, I'm saying this because people in the comments are probably going to say, dude, I was trying to tell you about this for like a year. And yeah, you you probably were, but I probably thought that you were trying to steal my social security numbers, so uh, sorry. But I watched this video, and my god, guys, those people weren't lying. Jack Scalfani is a terrible, awful person. And what that DM said was not an exaggeration. You're about to watch a clip from, I guess, what was supposed to be some weird like religious parental podcast where Jack admits amongst many other things to trying to kill his son. I'm, I'm not joking. Okay. I'll let you listen. This is really, this is the key part here. We did a great job parenting. We didn't do the best job 
and but we did the best we could mm-hmm. at the time. The other side, who uh, she's a totally sweet person, but was not strict at all. He had carte blanche. Yeah. So every weekend it was carte blanche, and every Monday or Tuesday we were hammering our kid, to get him back in his shape. Right. By the time Wednesday Thursday rolls around, he's finally our child again. Friday comes, she picks him up, and he'll he'll admit to you it destroyed him. Yeah. Okay, so it's hard to find a lot of information about this because, believe it or not, Jack Scalfani's life is not exactly something that most people are keeping record of, but I'm assuming what he's talking about here is his son Garrett is not Tammy's son, who is the woman sitting next to him. I'm pretty sure Garrett is from Jack's first marriage, and that his ex-wife and his stepdad had him on the weekends, where he got complete freedom to do whatever he wanted. That's my assumption, okay? I can't say that's for certain what he's saying here, but I feel like it's a pretty, pretty safe assumption, okay? Reconcile it was like- when you're a kid. It was it was rough, and he starts because he couldn't handle it. I was Mister Strict Parent, mm-hmm. and she just didn't do anything, and it was it was it just messed him up. Mm-hmm. And so he starts having rage mm-hmm. issues. So uh, so we had to deal with that. And as he got into his teen years, um, he had a great home life. He had everything his heart desired. He never went without. Okay, so I want you to really, really remember that this guy said his son had a good home life. Great home life, even. Okay, just just don't forget that, all right? I wanted I wanted him, to, at age 13, to start his own company. We talked about it. We want to encourage him to start early. We don't want him just wasting money and blowing money. We mm-hmm. want him to earn money and, and get excited about something. It's right. his. And so by the time he's 18, he would have it, something that's already substantial, right? So, so we got him into building computers. And... Uh, I took him to a shop in Huntington Beach every three times a week. He was interning there. They were teaching him how to put it all together. And that was where he learned how to smoke pot. And I still haven't given that one up, that I was the reason he started smoking pot. I encouraged him. I found the place. And I got my son hooked on drugs. It, it escalated. And he started uh, started cursing at Tammy and me and having rage issues and... Okay, so this is Jack's story. Up until this point, apparently Garrett started to puff on the Mary Jane and it gives him rage issues, according to Jack, which uh, I don't know if you guys have ever met a stoner. I have. Got lots of friends who enjoy the occasional puff, okay? Rage issues and pot don't really go together. I'm going to assume that these, quote, rage issues were actually because of Garrett's home life. Obviously, I can't say that for certain certain, but I think it's a pretty good guess. Not because he was smoking weed. Now we're about to get into the uh, really, really heavy part of this. And I just want you guys to really consider one thing before going into this. Before you try and back him up and say that, oh, maybe he's right about his son. Maybe his son was really doing this. Maybe it was because of this or that. If this guy is willing to admit what he's about to admit, not only to other people, but to the entire internet, to anybody who wanted to click on this video and admit it proudly, what kind of things do you think might have gone on behind closed doors? What kind of things is he not so proud to admit? And what stuff could he be hiding about his parenting? Just a thought. There were two times once he put his hand on me and and it wasn't like he pushed me, but it was in an aggressive way. Mm -hmm. And I took him down to the ground. I threw him down to the ground. And then the second time he put his hands on Tammy, pushed her up against the door and I took him to the ground and I was going to kill him. I was choking him out and I hadn't fought since school. The only time you stop fighting in school is the principal's coming. But this was a moment I was choking him and screaming in his ears. You don't ever touch a woman. You don't ever touch a woman. The top of my voice, I was choking him so hard. His nose started to bleed. Oh, wow. And I didn't know when to stop. And his friend was in the room and he stepped over us. I don't remember him leaving. But uh, the interesting thing was Garrett never fought me, never pushed back, never tried to hurt me or hit me. He completely submitted, which out of respect, love, I don't know, fear, I don't know. I never understood that. So we, we had some rough times, and that's when we had to let him go at age 16. And 
say you're no longer ever allowed in this house. Okay, so um, a lot of information, a lot to cover, lots to talk about. Let's begin with the rebuttals. What I feel like people will say to defend this man, I think it's best to get that out of the way first. I would like to first point out that I would imagine Jack is what you would consider a textbook example of an unreliable narrator. This is a man who is proudly stating that he almost killed his child on a podcast. I would not put stretching the truth and lying beneath him, and we're having to take his word that Garrett, the son, initiated all this by putting his hands on Tammy and Jack. Now let's just address this really quickly. Even if that did happen, even if what they're saying is all true, this kid did have all of these rage issues that they had no part in creating. If you think what Jack did is an appropriate response either time, you are a psychopath and you should be in prison for the safety of others. We are talking about a teenage kid here versus a grown man who is his parent, who likely taught him this behavior. Okay, if you're gonna be in my comments section saying he just did what a father needs to do, I'm sending your credentials to the FBI, buddy. You need to be watched. I'm not trying to speculate, but I'm going to anyways. And I feel like I have a pretty good basis on doing so. I'm gonna keep going back to this, but I feel like the absolute absurdity of this cannot be understated. If you are willing to admit this to the internet, to other people, there is no way this kind of behavior is abnormal for you. You must think it's normal. I would bet money that this was was not the first time that Jack was physical with this kid. So obviously the kid is not going to know how to behave. Obviously he's going to have behavioral issues because his father is Jack. This is insane. Look, it's one thing if you said your kid was hitting your spouse and you had to remove them from the room and maybe you had to grab them or hold them or something like that. But to puff out your chest and brag about how you pinned your teenage son to the ground and started choking him to death and you didn't know when to stop? This man belongs in a prison. So obviously, I don't know that there's a whole lot more that Jack could admit that would be worse than this, but he gets pretty close later in this podcast. Now, I'm not going to play this clip because if I do, I don't think YouTube will allow this video to be up, which I understand, okay, and you will too. If you want to go watch this video, he says this stuff around the 52 minute mark, if for some reason you think I'm lying. But Jack and Tammy tell a story about how they were going to drop off, I believe, Jack Jr. at a church. I don't really know who they're talking about, but they're talking about dropping somebody off at a kid's night at a church, and they decide to stay and sit at a service. They then recount how the pastor came onto the stage and started talking about how we as a country need to napalm a certain group of people in their entirety. Now, I'm not going to talk about who, he said, because it shouldn't matter. Now, you might be thinking, okay, August, you can't really blame them for that. They were at a random church. Sure, if they didn't follow this up by saying that they were thinking, where do I sign up? How do I give you all my money? And then these two human dumpsters to the left and right that I guess host this podcast, join in and start saying stuff like, how do I set up an auto deposit for my tithe? So, uh, yeah, I know this kind of stuff is going to be old news to a lot of people. Apparently, I'm kind of late to the party on this one, but for everybody who was unaware, Jack Scalfani, aka the host of the Cooking with Jack show, the guy who can't cook meat to save his life and will eat raw anything to make it seem like he knows what he's doing, is a child abuser and an advocate for genocide. Not exactly what I planned on learning this week, but hey, guess you can really never know what life's gonna throw at you, huh? Well, guys, what are your thoughts on this entire situation? Me, personally, I feel really kind of dumb for giving this guy the benefit of the doubt for so many years. For a long time, I've just chalked up the stuff this guy has done and said as him just not knowing any better, him being ignorant. But I think this video proves without a doubt that everything questionable that this guy has done or said has been 100% on purpose because this guy is an awful human being. I mean, who knows the kind of stuff that this guy has done that we'll just never know about. When you're willing to admit the kind of stuff this guy has, it's pretty scary to think about what he might be keeping in the dark. To all the people who have tried to tell me about this over the last couple of years and I've just missed it, I honestly am sorry. This is something that I did not mean to let slip through the cracks. Let's hope this is the, uh, the last occurrence of something like this, right? Unfortunately, I, uh, I doubt it will be though. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and walk on over to that subscribe button and touch it. It's free. It won't cost you anything. But for now, that's all I have for you today. Bye.